Kristen Atchison here, and we're still, still talking about multimodal perception using the NOVA project. Um, this is our second video lecture talking about the brain. So in the brain, there's these areas called multisensory convergence zones. And what these really are are just areas of the brain where that unimodal information is combined from the various sensory modalities. Um, so this is where we were talking about unified perception. This is where you perfect perception is being unified in the brain in these multi-sensory convergence zones. So again, it's just when different multiple senses are converging into one place. That's where this name comes from. And the superior colliculus, which we've talked about before, um, is thought to be one of these areas. Um, in this bisection of an actual brain here, um, you can see that this superior colliculus um, is kind of on the top of the brain stem um, where these green arrows are pointing. We have one on each side of the hemisphere. And as we talked about previously in the course, um, about 10% of the axons on the optic tract branch off to this area. Um, again, there's one in each part of the hemisphere of the brain at the top of the brain stem. And as we talked about in the Yantis chapter, this is really thought to be a site of multisensory integration um, from where we're getting information combined from different sensory systems. Obviously, we have 10% of the axons from the object track going here. We have other sensory information going in here, too, including audition. Um, so there is this area of the brain where we see this kind of this idea of modularity, modularity where there's a module of the brain where this, this is happening. And these are called those multisensory convergence zones. And again, the superior colliculus is one of those places. Now, while we see this integration in these kind of areas of the brain, in these sites of the brain, in these multisensory convergence zones, we also see it at the neural level as well. Well, before we talk about that, I want to kind of go back and review a couple of ideas that we talked about way early in the course um, so that we're really all on the same page again before we proceed. So remember, receptive fields are an area that when stimulated, change the firing rate in the single cell. So it can either go up or it can go down. And these receptive fields are variable in size. Um, and the information from this change, whether we see an increase in firing or a decrease in firing um, from that baseline is sent to other neurons. When it's sent to other neurons, this is called convergence. Um, when these neural circuits um, converge into one neuron. We talked about many to one conversion in chapter two, that was rods. Um, and we talked about few to one or one to one convergent um, in chapter two. And then we were talking about cones. So again, this is the idea that there's many cells that are receiving this information and they're all sending their information to a single neuron. Um, and this would be that many to one convergence where we have a lot of cells receiving information and they're sending it to one place. Well, this can happen within um, multiple sensors as well. We've talked about it previously happening within vision, and that's why we saw the difference between acuity um, and sensitivity for the rods versus the cones, dependent on their convergence. Um, but we see this convergence of um, different information on a multi-sensory level as well. Um, but this time, instead of it just being information from one modality such as vision, we'll get it from two mo modalities. So we'll have um, a vision receptor and an audition receptor, and they both send information to a multi-sensory neuron. And what's really interesting about this um, is this they can also have what's called cross-modal receptive fields. And this is a single receptive field, a single spatial area um, that's activated by more than one modality. Um, so this area can be um, simulated by both vision and audition um, in the same spatial location. What's really nice about this is it explains multisensory enhancement. So we talked about how the sum was greater than, um, how the whole was greater than the sum of its parts. Um, this is where this is coming from. Um, the idea that we're getting this information from two different places or three different places um, in the same spatial location and we're getting an enhancement. Um, so this really allows for this spatial principle of multi-sensory integration um, and the idea that these these receptive fields overlap. They're happening in the same place. Um, so 
we see um, a receptive field for audition and vision in the same spatial location, which allows for this integration. And it allows for this um, enhancement. Um, and this is called that spatial, spatial principle, the idea that this is happening in the same spatial area, the same location. So just for example, you know, say it was happening, you know, in the upper left, um, you know, part of your visual receptive field. Well, things in the upper left um, area of your audition receptive field would be also be activated in the same place. So these receptive fields overlap and really allow for this integration um, on a neural level. So we found these multisensory neurons in all in in many many areas of the brain, even outside of those convergence zones. So even outside of areas like the superior colliculus, we're finding um, these multisensory neurons. Um, even the areas that we thought were just doing one modality, such as the primary visual cortex. Um, there's been um, again cells within the primary visual cortex which. Its primary job is vision, right? That's what the name says, that are activated by both vision and audition. What's interesting about this is this really challenges that idea that we have about modularity, that each section of the brain is set up to process just one thing, okay? This is kind of putting that theory on its end. And what what some researchers, not all researchers, but what some researchers are talking about is it may be that these areas um, that we thought of as unimodal, as only processing one kind of information like vision or audition, may actually just prefer that kind of information. They may prefer audition, they may prefer vision, but can really process multisensory information when it's really beneficial for the organism. Um, and granted, this is gonna be pretty low level. It's not gonna be, you know, um, high level kind of integration, but where we're still seeing these converge, these um, multi-sensory neurons, where we're seeing these cross-modal receptive fields, we're finding them in these kind of more unimodal cortices. Um, so it may be, again, that it's a preference for vision in the primary visual cortex, or it's a preference for audition in the primary auditory cortex. Um, but we see this multisensory integration happening um, in the neural level within these areas as well. So this is kind of our conversation about the brain um, in terms of multimodal perception. Thanks.